Hello viewers and welcome to yet another live action commentated match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm honored to present you with a video from the very heart of Fantasy Flight Games itself. This was filmed in the Event Center and was the very first video sent in courtesy of our player sitting to the right, a dear friend of mine, Christopher Dale Bates, whom you may better know as Octagon user Brain Damage 99. On the left, we have his adversary in this match. It is Tony Christie. And to the left, we have a lovely alternate art version of our original Chaos Faction Warlord Zarather. And to the right, we have our most recent to be released Tau Faction Warlord Commander Starblaze. So, in assessing our opening planetary layout, planet number one is going to be Aatrox Prime, which allows you the opportunity to target the enemy HQ or an adjacent planet and deal one point of damage to each extant enemy unit present at that location. Planet number two is going to be Elowith, which allows its victor the opportunity to trigger its ability, taking a peek at the top three cards of their deck, adding one of those to their hand, and then assembling the remaining two in the order of their choice on the bottom of their deck. Planet number three is going to be Yavarn, the put a unit into play from your hand directly into your HQ planet, Planet 4 is Taurus, if you're fortunate enough to win a battle there. If you control fewer units than does your opponent, you can accumulate your choice of 3 resource tokens or a whopping 3 cards. And at planet number 5, where we see a freshly played copy of Earthcast Technician by uh, Commander Starblaze there, that's going to be Planum, which affords you the chance of relocating a non-Warlord unit to the planet of your choice. So that Earthcast Technician to the right note, Christopher happens to possess our initiative token that ended up fetching a copy of the plus three attack value attachment ion rifle to him. He revealed it to his opposition and then added it to his hand. And then Tony, piloting Zarather, was fortunate enough to have come across a copy of his signature support, the one copy card Shrine of Warp Flame, where as soon as an enemy unit is destroyed, you can simply exhaust that attachment to return the topmost Zinch trait card to your hand. Something incredibly powerful considering Zinch's Firestorm is a thing, as are Zarather's Flamers. But back on to Commander Shadow Sun's side of the table, we've got a copy of the Ardent Auxiliaries. Two costs, two attack, two hit points, one command icon. Uh, positioned at the first planet, also now possessing an ion rifle, so they attack for five. The instant they end up getting swept up into the Warlord's retinue, uh, when you commit it to a planet, if you possess an Astra Militarum faction unit at that planet, you end up readying that unit. So, definitely a great first planet bully. Planet number four, another two-cost army unit. We've got the Imperial Guard unit, the 1-2-2 two, two command icon Iron Guard recruits. That works great with Commander Starblaze. He himself is a 2-6 Tau faction warlord when you commit him to a planet. If you have an AM unit at an adjacent planet, you can relocate that unit to Starblaze's current planet. We've got a copy of Recon Drones positioned at planet number two. Limited card, no cost, 0-1 with two command icons, something absolutely stellar. And if you did didn't already tell, based upon that first turn Fortress of Madness, the faction-specific army unit resource cost reducing support, something generally considered as a relatively maligned, very rarely seen card in our Conquest LCG community here. Uh, regardless, we saw that interplay that immediately screams out to me a very slow, a very expensive deck, uh, or just a novice player that has no idea what he's doing, but I definitely don't think that uh, Tony qualifies. So, we saw a couple of copies of Promise of Glory put a whopping total of four cultist tokens into play. Each and every one of those ended up being sacrificed to afford that Ancient Keeper of Secrets, a seven-cost card, 5-5 with three command icons put into play at planet number two, our players have a little bit of uh, a laugh over uh, the attempt to play a copy of the Orc Faction Attachment Rocket Launcher uh, to the no war gear uh, clause possessing uh, Ancient Keeper of Secrets there, but uh, definitely in a casual match like that, no big deal. And uh, I think in having given this game a bit of a preview beforehand, uh, Tony definitely laments the fact that his uh, oh-so-clever combo is kind of immediately crushed uh, by the impossibility of that play. 
but regardless, Zarathur still has a hell of a lot to offer, and uh, that Ancient Keeper of Secrets, something you definitely don't see every day, you can simply sacrifice a cultist trait unit, whether it's a token, whether it's an army unit, as an action, whether it's exhausted, whether it's not, in order to immediately ready your 5-5, and even though it's expensive, three command icons most definitely trumps two, but Zarathur shows up at planet number four, that unit count critical planet, Commander Starblaze instead shows up at planet number one, so Aatrox Prime is looking to be quite handily won there to the right by Chris. Planet number one is going to be a whopping one resource, one card to the right for Chris. Planet number two is going to be two cards to the left for Tony, our Zarathur player. Planet number three is going to be entirely uncontested. Planet number four is going to be Zarathur conveniently trumping the two command icons associated with that IG unit. That's going to be a card and a resource there for Tony. Planet number five is going to be Planum, resulting in a complete push, nothing for either player. A Aatrox Prime is going to be able to fire. Looks like we saw that rocket launcher discarded uh, to prevent the one point of damage dealt out to that Ancient Keeper of Secrets. Zarathur manages to kill off that copy of the Iron Guard recruits with his modified attack swing of two. And it looks like Zarathur and the Ancient Keeper and the Rogue Trader make a grand total of three units relative to... Ah, oh, that's unfortunate for Chris. Uh, that's a total of four units he controlled. So, we see an HQ phase come and go. The initiative token now moves over to our Zarathur faction... Zarathur player, Chaos faction player, uh, four resources, two cards for each of our players. Our new fifth planet is going to be Barless, the random card discard planet with that fat plus two card bonus. Very desirable target to pursue indeed. Copy of Chaos Fanatics graces the table. Note, we did not yet see that Fortress of Madness used, so perhaps that was a bit of an oversight on Tony's part, or perhaps Christopher can use that information to his advantage uh, that there's going to be at least least one additional army unit played because as you should be well aware knowing is half the battle so rattling deadeye now positioned at planet number one 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 for one range unit and it's got a command icon another copy of chaos fanatics this time put down on planet number three uh, it's a one two for two with two command icons it's opposite a sanctioned psyker also at planet number three but this time played by chris and uh we also happen to see a snake bite thug positioned at planet number one so at this point Chris has got one green and one red icon thanks to the copy of uh, Aatrox Prime that he was able to capture and uh, because that's pretty difficult to see I'm going to be keeping track on a copy of old school notepad notebook paper while uh, our match is ongoing here but planet number one is going to look like an absolutely hellish nightmare to try to overcome a rattling dead eye is definitely not going to be able to take down a snake bite thug without a hell of a lot of help and uh, definitely that ancient ancient keeper of secrets is going to be an incredibly daunting target indeed so i can only imagine that commander starblaze is presumably going to be steering clear from the first planet those two Chaos Fanatics on the board are going to make it very dangerous for Starblaze to show up because uh, they could potentially win Tony some command and then he could kill something big and scary. Like uh, Zarathur has the initiative token, he could use the Ancient Keeper of Secrets to potentially kill off that copy of the Ardent Auxiliaries if it shows up to the planet. Because even if we see the Searing Burst Cannon, Starblaze's signature attachment discarded as shields, 5 minus 3 is still 2, that's still a dead copy of of the Ardent Auxiliaries, the Snakebite Thug now has a range thanks to the timely attachment of a rocket launcher, so it would be able to attack for three even prior to that Rattling Deadeye. All of that equates to a whole hell of a lot of damage, and if Starblaze were to show up, you could throw away one or two copies of Chaos Fanatics to afford the Ancient Keeper of Secrets one or two additional attacks for the value of five, which is... Uh, quite hellish indeed. But planet number one is going to be two cards, one to Tony, thanks to a total of four command icons trumping three. Planet number two is going to be a total of two resources for Zarathur. Planet number three, the destination of uh, Commander uh, Starblaze. Note that Ardent Auxiliaries should uh, not currently be exhausted. Uh, that's going to be a total of one card and one resource there to the right for Chris. Planet number four is going to be a card and a resource for Zarathur plus an additional one resource thanks to that rogue trader uh, and as our planet as we've got a battle ongoing at planet number one 
That's going to be a dead Rattling Deadeye and a dead Recon Drone. So we come to the end of the first combat round. All of those units ready. Normally, that's a good opportunity to use all sorts of uh, shenanigans, like using that prior to the end of combat action window to trigger some sort of additional ability and then do something before you win the planet. Uh, but that's going to be Elowith 1 by Zarather. That's going to be one blue planet type icon for him. It's going to be the opportunity for him to tutor the top three cards of his deck for any one card of his choice and then put the remaining two on the bottom of his deck in the order of his choosing. Planet number five, I believe I didn't get to that earlier. That's going to be a plus two card bonus for Zarather. So Zarather is just raking in the money, doing absolutely great in regard to cards. But Starblaze was able to kill off that copy of the enemy Chaos Fanatics. And uh, in regard to just unit count, looks as though Zarather is currently sitting at three, four, five, six total units relative to Starblaze's three, I believe. So uh, just as Tony had the opportunity to trigger Taurus the first turn, looks like uh, Starblaze himself is now going to have that same chance. But Zarather wins that battle at Planum quite handily. Looks as though he's using that opportunity to relocate his ancient Keeper of Secrets from his HQ to the first planet. And looks as though our players are having some sort of conversation about something uh looks as though the order of our planets uh was perhaps uh, put down erroneously at some point. Okay, perhaps there was a bit of confusion, but regardless, uh, our new fifth and final planet is going to be Ossus 4, so perhaps a card ended up sliding out of place. But in any case, we've now got a new HQ phase having come and gone. Starblaze possesses our initiative token. Both player now possesses an additional four resource tokens and two cards. And hey, talk about units you definitely don't see every day and definitely aren't terribly thrilled to see. It's the Sakea XV88 Broadside, my personal favorite playmat. Uh, but of course, we're talking about the cards. So for a grand total of six incredibly expensive resource it's a 4-6 unit with three command icons, and the instant it picks up an attachment, it gains area effect 2. But that's a very expensive unit that isn't doing anything too tremendously dangerous up until uh, just this very instant. So it's only got three command icons, which in and of itself is funny to say, only three command icons. But thanks to that rogue trader, that means that Tony's still potentially going to be collecting two resources at the first planet. But, of course, I'm sure you did not miss that copy of Gun Drones now affixed to the broadside. That means it's going to be an area effect four unit with initiative, uh, but unless our Tau can somehow augment that ability to uh, give it beyond area effect for, it's not going to be able to kill off that copy of Ancient Keeper of Secrets in but a single move. Uh, looks as though we saw some unit played, it got a copy of Rocket Launcher affixed to it, and then we ended up seeing a copy of Deception bounce it to hand, so it's a little bit unfortunate that our camera isn't quite adjusted to catch all of this action, uh, but now we can have, we have what I can only imagine is a copy of the signature army unit Zarathur's Flamers at planet number one. So if Zarathur shows up at that planet, he's going to risk uh, taking area effect four, which would be an absolute nightmare. But he'll be able to have that Zarathur's Flamers sacrifice itself for three. And then perhaps with the assistance of Azinch's Firestorm or something like that, because note, uh, Archon's Terror is not an option when you're allied with orcs. That could be a way around that uh, broadside, or it'll simply eliminate, uh, you know, pretty much every standing unit at that planet on the chaos side of the table with its ability there. So that could be an absolute nightmare. It could be not that big of a deal. Note that copy of Fortress of Madness has at this point generated three resources for Tony, or rather spared him three resources. So it's actually served to provide him with some, well... I guess you can't even really consider it profit. If you value a card at approximately two resources, then it's basically broken even at this point. But each and every additional turn, it's gravy. Note, planet number one, there's a copy of the zero cost 2-2 two -two no command icon Mystic Warden. And if a battle at the planet where it's located ends, you have to sacrifice it. But check it out. Zarathur decided to go to planet number one. Definitely a ballsy play. Commander Starblaze also showed up at planet number one. So it's looking like a hell of a lot of resources there for Zarathur. 
Zarather. Will we see Zinch's Firestorm? Will we see Zarather's Flamers? Discarded the initiative token is, of course, in Chris's hand. But uh, I guess at planet number one, we've got five command icons for a Zarather player. So that's going to be two resources won by him. We see that Zarather's Flamers indeed exhausted. So good on me for guessing the identity of that unit based on limited information. Uh, I guess good on me for identifying it correctly. But that's going to be three damage threatened to that broadside. So let's see how exactly that gets resolved. Planet number two is going to have been two car, uh, one card, one resource there for Chris. That's going to be three points of damage to the Sakea. That is a few resource tokens we are seeing grabbed. And what exactly is this going to be? Planet three, by the way, is two resources, one card for uh, Tony. Planet 4, two cards for Tony. Planet 5, thanks to that snakebite thug, is going to be two resources for Tony. Looks like Tony is, yes, that's going to be a zinch, his firestorm, so he is a man that takes no risk. I count at least six resources, and so he didn't want to give his opponent any opportunity to save that six-cost elite. So, looks like uh, Commander Starblaze ended up sinking a whole hell of a lot of units, well, whole hell of a lot of cards into that unit, uh, but it looks looks as though we've actually got a copy of Starblaze's signature event, uh, Bond of Brotherhood played, so I think uh, definitely Starblaze was counting on Bond of Brotherhood bringing the broadside up to a grand total of eight hit points. That would have made it all but insurmountable to kill, but three points of damage from Zarather's Flamers, and then if we saw eight resources spent on a uh, Zinch's Firestorm, that would have been a minimum of five points of damage, even with the Searing burst cannon and uh that would have been absolutely enough damage to kill off that uh, uh that broadside there or maybe our uh, chaos player was a little bit conservative and it's again funny to call it conservative when you're spending seven resources on a zinch's firestorm but if you wanted to uh you know play it completely safe and just rest assured knowing that his opponent probably had a two shield value card but no more than a you know two shield value card that he probably hadn't drawn the searing burst cannon uh, then I suppose he just saved a little bit of value managed to kill off that threatening enemy unit and now it's going to be all up to uh, our chaos player looks like Starblaze is exhausted having took a swing at I would presume Zarather. Zarather himself took a swing. Oh, and I guess uh, my numbers here are slightly off regarding Zinch's Firestorm because Zarather, of course, himself modifies that damage. So I think we did end up seeing seven resources invested in that Zarather's, uh, in that Zinch's Firestorm, which dealt a total of uh, eight points of damage. Yeah, so it looks like Starblaze ended up dealing a couple points of damage to Zarather. Zarather ends up retreating at the end of the combat round. We saw a copy of Chaos. Fanatics discarded so that Ancient Keeper of Secrets could end up uh, killing off a bunch of the enemy opposition here. And then, of course, at the end of the combat round... That's going to be uh, Starblaze retreating from that planet, and that is going to be Yavarn won by our Chaos Faction players, so... Looks like Yavarn was triggered, and that is Fireblade Kyvray being put into play. So I can't quite tell what our Chaos Faction player acquired thanks to that play. Uh, rest assured, in the future, I'll definitely encourage Christopher to tilt the camera down ever so slightly as Zarather is quite out of focus. And uh, considering that Yavarn was triggered, I'm still not seeing anything for our Chaos player. Uh, it seems a very odd odd move to have triggered that planet if you're uh, not intending to have won it, uh, but I guess it it seems like it would be a really odd mood move to trigger it if you didn't have some big nastiness in your hand to trigger, but I can't see how else uh, Fireblade Kyvray would be sitting in the HQ there, but... We've got a copy of Zarathur's Flamers put out to our current Planet 3 as our players have moved beyond another HQ phase. So, at the present moment, it's going to be up to Tony. He's got uh, two blue icons and then one icon of each other kind. So, Taurus here is just going to be 
one red and one green. It's not quite his victory condition. We won't actually see that until our second planet, uh, Planum. So let's kind of see how things get resolved here. We've got that sanctioned Psyker at planet number one. We've got the Ardent Auxiliaries at planet number one with an Ion Rifle, so they're going to be able to attack for five. But the initiative token is now in our Chaos player's possession. Uh, looks like... We've got another Ardent Auxiliaries at planet number two that looked a lot like a Repulsor Impact Field that's going to be affixed to that unit, uh, which would be a little bit of an unusual play affixed to a two-copy unit, but we'll kind of have to see how it uh, ends up interacting in combat. That could have been a little bit of glare, uh, making an ion rifle just look a little bit more glowy than usual. Very interesting play here from our Chaos player. That is going to be a copy of Sewing Chaos. Uh, so that is going to mean that each and every unit at a blue blue technology icon planet with cost two or lower is going to be destroyed and it looks as though i was i believe correct that looks like a two shield icon card to me and that's going to be a dead copy of repulsor impact field well a discarded copy it's going to be a dead ardent auxiliaries and that's going to be a uh, destroyed rogue trader so this shrine of warp flame keep in mind each and every time that an enemy unit has been destroyed you can simply exhaust that signature support to return the topmost zinch card to your hand whether that's that's Zinch's Firestorm, whether that's Zarather's Flamers, and uh, considering that an event or an ability is resolved in its entirety and then put in a discard pile and then you can react to it, uh, you could potentially use a Zinch's Firestorm once per turn, each and every turn of an entire game, uh, recurring it each and every time it kills an enemy unit thanks to that Zinch's uh, Firestorm recursion, uh, courtesy of the Shrine of Warp Flame. So, both of our players are deciding where exactly they want to send their units. Looks like Zarather's destination is going to be planet number two. Tony is setting himself up quite nicely uh, for a victory condition, a simply horrific amount of units he has at that planet. And uh, wouldn't you know it, it looks like Yavarn did actually put something into play last turn. It's a second copy of the Ancient Keeper of Secrets. That is an absolutely horrific unit to see. You'll have to please pardon my uh, momentary confusion earlier earlier uh, because that second Ancient Keeper was most definitely off of camera and that is just a completely horrific thing to see so my god I guess planet number one we're gonna see a battle and uh, things are looking pretty grim here for Commander Starblaze who just hasn't been able to get any traction whatsoever that's gonna be a Zinch's Firestorm played presumably at planet number one to kill off that copy of the five attack ardent auxiliaries that unit is going to be destroyed zave's split tongue happens to generate a cultist token in the chaos players hq each and every time i believe an enemy unit is destroyed at his location so that's going to be a plus one cultist token note those cultist tokens can be sacrificed by the ancient keepers of secrets uh in order to ready them and that's an additional five value attack that's completely just uh, terrifying to see our Chaos player is going to end up winning Taurus. That's going to be a red and a green planet type icon for him. That does not win him the game, but with a congratulatory fist bump, it looks as though Christopher Dale Bates ends up throwing in the towel. He calls out GG. Good game. Very well played by both of our players. Congratulations to Tony Christie for managing to pilot a rather unconventional Zinch heavy cultist trait deck home to victory. So congratulations to him. A very fun match. I very much hope you'll excuse some suboptimal commentary uh, owing in part due to the camera being ever so slightly out of focus, but this nevertheless made for one hell of a match. Thank you to Christopher for taking the opportunity to send this footage in from the very heart of Fantasy Flight Games, the event center in Roseville, Minnesota itself. So again, thank you so much to both of our players. Hopefully we can expect many more videos to come from dear Sir Christopher, and again, very well played by Tony Christie. So a thank you to both of our players, a thank 
thank you to you, the viewer watching at home, and as always, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, do consider sharing this content, because the more individuals there are that end up exposed to this living card game, the more people may give Conquest a try, enjoy what they experience, someday join our community, and of course, all together we continue to send the message to Fantasy Flight Games, telling them to continue to support this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, I would encourage you to do so through Facebook or on Twitter, and if at any point you feel so inclined to help support the Hive Tyrant, as little as a dollar or two on a strictly monthly basis really does wonders for helping to keep me motivated, helping me to cover some of my file hosting and operating expenses, and it definitely does not go unappreciated. So, once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.